Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartuk-107. Last time we listened in, our group of heroes had just reached the coastline of the Katorian Sphere where they discovered a large expanse of water and learned that they had to get to the other side of the bay. The next morning, they set out and discovered a fractured ship being attacked by a pair of giants. Melee ensued when Bolger, the former sailor, charged ahead on his own. The rest of the group joined in after initially being caught off guard, and together they managed to drive off the enormous humanoids. Fargus laid into the reckless actions of Bolger and Cave for the last two days, and the, left the two females fuming. We rejoin them as the bard and gnome discuss the heat of the moment. He has a point, quipped Bolger. The half-elf nodded in agreement, and the pair moved towards the others and openly gave a heartfelt apology. I could tell you that I was swept away by the heat of the moment, began Bolger. I could tell you that my sea roots took over and that I wanted to save the ship. I wanted to save the sailors. I wanted to make the giants pay for their behavior. But you're right. My actions were reckless and could have gotten us all severely damaged or killed. You are right. I am wrong. Message received and I apologize for my rash actions. I offer no other excuse. Sister Elaine, Lady Arena, and Fargus Stoutheart listened to the speech and then looked to Cabe Silvertongue. The bard thought for a minute, mulling over how to phrase his apology, but finally shook his head. He said it. We have been wrong. We haven't thought about our actions and let our emotions dictate what very well could have been a bad situation. I won't promise that it won't happen again. I hope it doesn't. I'm quite upset and I think it will take several more days to get this out of my system. But yes, we were both wrong. The trio looked at each other and nodded their heads and moved towards the surf. Well, let's give the sailors a decent burial, stated the cleric, as the pair joined them. Only an hour passed as the vessel had a crew of four. Sister Elaine gave a brief ceremony and a crude raft had been constructed. The bodies were laid atop the makeshift boat along with flammable material. After setting the craft on fire, Fargus used an old tree limb to push it back into the water. Bolger nodded in silence as the pyre burned true and the raft subsequently sank, sending the victims to the bottom of the bay. The group mounted up and sped south, hoping to get solid distance between them and the angry giants. A brief respite at noon was the only break the group took. They marveled at some of the ships in the far side of the bay and speculated that they must be quite large in order to be spotted from this distance. Riding to dusk, the group made out a stone fortress off in the distance. The landscape changed to a swampy environment and the horses had to slow down. Multiple fires could be seen in the courtyard, but it did not appear to be under siege. The party discovered a road leading to the fortress and ran into several peasant-looking types. Inquiring about the fortress, they were told it belonged to a group of knights sworn to protect the countryside. The structure itself was called Nako Keep and was hosting a celebration in honor of the nation's independence from Pardor over a century ago. Happy that accommodations might be available, the group smacked their horses on the flanks and sped forward. The main gate was open, but guarded by a cadre of metal-clad warriors. As the party approached, they opted to put Sister Elaine in the lead and let her do the talking, as her profession would be more readily accepted than their own. Reaching the gates, the heroes dismounted and walked their horses up to the main entrance of the outer courtyard. The cleric led the way and bowed to the men at the gate and introduced herself. A warm greeting ensued, and it was discovered that the warriors of Nako Keep were avid Dilo worshippers and welcomed the Reverend Daughter enthusiastically. She explained that she and her compatriots were headed to Haddonfield and inquired if they would be able to obtain some lodging. One of the knights, Sir Henry, pointed out that they were welcome to set up camp inside in the outer courtyard as there was a celebration in honor of Fartook's independence. 
They were advised that they could keep their weapons, but they were duly warned that fighting would be viewed poorly. The group entered in with other citizens of the region and picked out a spot along the wall. The people were friendly and music echoed throughout the large expanse. The festival environment brought much needed smiles to the group and helped chase away the foul memories of the past week. Their tent was set up and Lady Irena located some elves from her home region and moved off to discuss recent events with them. Bolger and Fargus left to find a nail wagon and were not disappointed to learn that there were several of them present. Cabe Silvertongue and Sister Elaine sat outside their tent and he offered more apologetic words which were waved off by the cleric. We all deal with loss in different ways. We understand. We just want our innings to be off in the distance rather than at the hands of some giants, quipped the cleric. Cabe laughed and nodded and noticed several individuals with musical instruments headed towards the far end of the courtyard. He called out to them and asked them about their instruments and was elated to discover that there was a talent show getting ready to take place on stage several yards away. They be offering a purse of a hundred gold coins to the winner, proclaimed one of the men. The group went on to explain that all manner of talents were being sought from singing, dancing, martial skills, and a huge swath in between. The half-elf's eyes lit up and he looked back to Sister Elaine and realized that he shouldn't leave her alone. Go on, you jackass, you know you want to, smiled Sister Elaine. Go knock him dead. Cabe quickly grabbed his instrument and hurried to catch up to the others. A smile crossed the woman's face as the atmosphere was light and carefree, something she sorely missed. A few minutes later, the smile disappeared as a group of knights approached her. A large warrior approached and asked her her name. After her response, the man asked if she was the sister Elaine from Phoenix. Her gut wrenched, worried that she and the others may have wandered into a trap, but she could not lie. I am she who came from Phoenix. Is that an issue? The knight shook his head negatively and told her that it was not. Lord Mako would like a few minutes of your time if it is agreeable to you, milady. Taken aback at the strange response, she rose to her feet with the assistance of two flanking knights and brushed off her hands. I would very much like to meet your liege, gentlemen, and I am happy to thank him for his hospitality. The warriors gave a smart salute and guided her to the inner workings of the keep. Along the way, the men made small talk and discussed their adherence to the teachings of Dilo, which put Sister Elaine at ease. Crossing into the inner courtyard, she noticed multiple knights manning the walls and were visibly shocked that a reverend daughter was in their midst. Inside the castle, the cleric was led to the great hall where Lord Nako was busy putting on ceremonial armor. Upon seeing the woman, the robust man boomed out. Sister Elaine? From Phoenix? I have been waiting for you. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.